I know so many guys who uh, uh, walk around cheering uh, the military and applauding the military. And I know older people who are, uh, congratulate people in the military and pat them on the back, shake their hand, and thank them for defending their rights. Right. So let's talk about the military, the reality. Let's talk about reality. Let's skip the whole fantasy of the military and, and, and how thankful you are that they're defending your rights because they're not. Uh, let's skip the whole, oh, it's so manly to be in the military. And let's skip the whole nonsense about women being in the military. I was just doing a, uh, a research for another uh, health corner and uh, I was, you know, one thing led to another and I uh, ran into uh, urinary tract infections. And there are some women who are constantly uh, uh, in, u in a urinary tract infection. I just saw a video about one woman who was finally cured after being in permanent urinary tract infection for 25 years. Now, you want women to go out in the desert on their own uh, for six months at a time? A and if a urinary tract infection uh, isn't treated within just four to five days, it'll go into sepsis, meaning your blood will be uh, infected and there shortly after you will die. So let's skip all of that fantasy. You know, let's skip the fantasy of, uh, the government paying for your, uh, for your, uh, college education, uh, because I don't think anybody actually wants to pay for that. I know I don't. I don't want to pay for somebody else to go to college. Why would I want to pay for somebody else to go to college? I don't care what he did to, for him to go to college. Uh, thank you, Notre do. So let's, Let's look at what Dr. Amos Wilson said. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna elevate his speech to a, a little bit higher, higher level. Of course, this is a, a little bit old. A part of the New World Order is to criminalize the Third World. Because the military industrial complex is a complex that needs a chronic enemy, because the complex has become so vital to the American economic stability. So the nation literally has to stay in a permanent war mode or else it has to undergo drastic re reorganization of its socioeconomic and political system. Consequently, it is literally forced to demonize and criminalize other people as a basic for maintaining its socioeconomic and political system. This is what we mean when we say a scapegoat psychology. Dr. Amos Wilson, April 27, 1991. Now he said, uh, uh, third world. I'm going to elevate that to second and third world. And even, dare I say, first world uh, one cousin removed, if you get my drift, um, or one generation removed. Uh, so the, the, the basis is there. He's completely sound. Dr. Dr. Wilson is completely sound on his points that we have to maintain a constant state of war because the military industrial complex has so ingrained itself that Congress and dare I say the nation and Wall Street would not function, would cease to function as it is now if we weren't in perpetual war. Oh, you don't think we're at war? I looked up, I know people are always saying that I'm making up stuff. I looked up, uh, uh, statistics of the military in terms of GDP in terms of the various theaters of war that we're involved in. 
I'm only going to read about 20 or 30. Ready? Afghanistan, 4.7% of GDP. Uh, Albania, 1.5 GDP. Algeria, 4.6 GDP. Angola, 3. Point, that's in Africa, 3.5 GDP. Argentina, 0.7. Ar Armenia, 4.4% GDP. Australia, 1.9 GDP. Austria, 0.9 GDP. Azerbaijan, 4.9 GDP. Uh, Bangladesh, 1.3 GDP. Uh, Belarus, 1.1 uh, GDP. Belgium, 1.1 GDP. Uh, Belize, 1.1 GDP. Bolivia, 1.5 GDP. Let me read the bigger ones here. Let's see here. Um, Chile, 3.2 GDP. Colombia, 3.3 GDP. Let's see here. Ecuador, 3.5 GDP. Uh, Georgia, which is over by Russia, uh, 3% 3, 3 GDP. Greece, 2.8% GDP. Uh, India, 2.5 GDP. Iraq, 5.1% GDP. Uh, Israel, 6.8% GDP. That's a staggering number. Jordan, 4.7% GDP. Uh, Lebanon, 4.4% GDP. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Morocco, 3.3% GDP. I live there. That's in Africa. Although it was overrun, uh, by Arabs. And of course, they slaughtered the Africans that live there. And, uh, now the Moroccans all look Arab. They don't look black like they were when they overtook, uh, half of Europe. I'm sure they taught you that in school, right? That the black Africans took over half of Europe and were there for centuries, right? Because I know public school really teaches black kids uh, their history. Uh, Nambi, Namibia, 3.4% uh, GDP. And I lived in Morocco for some time. Uh, let's see here. Oman, 6% GDP. That's staggering. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Russian Federation. I don't know exactly what that means. 3.9% GDP. Saudi Arabia. 8.4 GDP. Singapore, 3.6 GDP. Swaziland, that's in Africa, 3% <laughs> GDP. Uh, There's just so much. Uh, let's see here. U.S. alone, 4.7 GDP. Uh, so that's, that's including all the bases across the United States. And it still comes to only 4.7%. But did you hear... What I said about uh, Israel, we spend more in Israel than we do in our own country. So that is, we have to keep up in all of these bases uh, to uh, keep the military industrial complex going. Now, they made an announcement, right? You all heard it. Next Friday, we're going to go to World War Three. That's what they said. Obama said he doesn't know. But the European nations took a vote and everybody but France said no. France said, yes, I'll go to war with you. Uh, but all the other nations, Great Britain, Germany. Right, now, I think Great Britain said no because the uh, Irish people said absolutely not. Obama is a traitor. He's treasonous. And he's treasonous to the people of Ireland. Get him out of here. Why are you transporting uh, nuclear weapons or weapons uh, when we are a neutral country? You cannot be transporting weapons uh, in our territory and on our airports. That is, that is against our treaty. We will not uphold and stand by this Obama character. That's what Ireland said. And I believe that uh, oh, because that went to such great publicity that uh, the, you know, the uh, Englanders also uh, said, oh, no, we won't have none of that. We can't, we can't tolerate that. So I ask you, why do you really think 
we're going to go to war, world war, in Syria. World war in Syria. What do you think is so important about Syria? Now, keep in mind what I just said about the quote. Keep in mind what I said about the updated part of the quote, that I say it's second world and first world. Uh, one cousin uh, removed. <laughs> Uh, what, why do you think Syria is so important that we're gonna go to World War III? The countries are already lining up, choosing sides. Already. They're taking, a, they're taking votes on who they're gonna side with and what they're gonna do. Who's gonna stay out? Sorry for scratching my nose. What they're gonna do, who's gonna stay out, who's gonna stay in, who's gonna help who, and who's not gonna let uh, who fly over their territory, right? France is all of a sudden so, so nice and, uh, uh, uh allied with us. I, I don't know what's going on there. That doesn't sound correct. Germany said no. Anyway, thank you for watching the Shikama live show. Uh, tell me why you think Syria is that important to go to World War Three over.